Welcome back to Primetime News. Special welcome to the folks who are watching on OneSpotMedia.com. A reminder as well that you can download our OneSpot Media app in the Google Play Store or the App Store as the number one followed by the word spot and media. A stunning revelation from the Agriculture Ministry this evening that some of the farmers being battered by the beet armyworm are the very same ones that contributed to the massive outbreak of the pest. Preliminary estimates show that the beet armyworm, some of which have turned into moths, have damaged about 100 acres of crops. The Jamaica Agricultural Society has so far estimated the damage to be about $100 million. We have been tracking this story for weeks in primetime news, and TVJ's Andrea Chisholm has the follow-up. I lost everything. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. A farmer describing the plight of those at the New Forest Duff House Agri Park in Manchester. You name it, the army worms ate it. Escalion, mango, beetroot, callaloo, tomatoes, thyme, onion, melon, and even flowers. You could have losses in the region of $100 million. That's not exaggeration. I was talking to um, some of the officers on the ground, and when you really look on the damage that has been done in both Manchester and St. Elizabeth, it would not be hard to get up to that number. We have reported case that at least 100 acres might be damaged. It's a mammoth outbreak. Worms morphing into moths, moths laying eggs which, if not destroyed, will create more worms, and the cycle continues. So why and how did this happen? What is happening is that there are farmers who, because of the low price of scallion, um, now at this time, between 15 and $20 per pound, the farmers opted not to reap the scallion. So those farms become breeding grounds for the pests. And it gets worse. What is happening is that because of those unmaintained fields and the good weather that we are having, the population flourished. And what it does, it migrates to farmers who are doing best practices. And with that, we have this devastation. We have to take some other fault because if most of the farmers would comply by the rule and regulation, I don't believe we'd have so much deficit. So not everybody following the best practice. Not everybody following the best practice. The Rural Agricultural Development Authority RADA is again urging farmers to attend training sessions and follow their advice. One of which is to handpick and destroy the big beet armyworms as chemicals can't kill them. Farmers have been doing that, but they say it's costly and tiresome. We need a chemist to come in and get the right thing, go back to the lab and provide something for the farmers that when we have the next outbreak, we can know what to do to emulate it. Until then, RADA is still investigating while working with farmers to get rid of the pest. By next Tuesday, the country should get more details on what's happening at the New Forest Dove House Agro Park. We react as the number one agro park. And if we not get picked up, the park will be here. And park and no agro. Andrea Chisholm, TVJ News. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries is celebrating a partnership expected to create jobs for farmers in coming weeks. The partnership saw the Sugar Corporation of Jamaica, SCJ, signing a 25-year lease agreement for 610 acres of land to Red Stripe Company for the cultivation of cassava to be used to brew beer. It's about replacing imported raw materials with locally produced raw materials. The company's expansion plan that has employed 100 farmers planting 1,000 acres of cassava. So we're planning to replace 40% of that imported raw material. We're planning to go to 3,000 acres of cultivated land to, uh, to be able to harvest cassava and use cassava as a substitute of high maltose corn syrup. Minister of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries, Carl Samuda, says the move is just the beginning. I want to see us expand the production so that we can export the product. Mm -hmm. Whilst I welcome and embrace the growth of Red Stripe, and that's our mother com com company, and we want to see it survive and grow and flourish and export the finished product. What I think we would love to see is 
the product, this raw material, applied worldwide. 